Hello, everyone, and welcome to my talk. Today, I will talk about LMs and how we can convert unstructured data to knowledge graphs. So let's get started. I will start with a little information about myself. Uh, I'm Noah. I'm a software engineer at neo 4 l and then I'm, I'm an LLM enthusiast. So I've been working with LLMs for a while now and doing different experiments with neo 4 l and LLMs. And here are some of my contact details. If you want to have a chat or just send me a funny picture or something, just feel free to contact me on any platform. And yeah, the agenda for today, we will first take a look at the problem and possible solutions, what an LLM is and what a knowledge graph is. And then we will move on to how we tackled the problem in a previous project where we applied LLMs and knowledge graphs to, to yeah, convert unstructured data to a knowledge graph. And then I will show you a demo of our resulting pipeline or the result graph from our pipeline. So let's get started. The problem. The problem is that knowledge graphs are really hard. Or sorry, the problem is that unstructured data is really hard to work with, right? Uh, and we limited us, ourselves to text data for, for this project. And you can't really do much with text. You can compare it to other texts with some semantic similarity or similar but it's hard to actually work with the contents of the data, right? So our solution was to apply a pipeline where we have some unstructured text and do some information extraction and then end up with a structured format in case, in this case, a knowledge graph. So consider this image to the right here. We have uh, Alice is 25 years old and Bob is her friend. We uh, extract some information and we will get a graph looking something like this. We have Alice with a property of 25 years old, and she has a relationship to Bob saying they are friends. So cool, we want to use LLMs and graphs, uh, knowledge graphs to uh, gain some information from text, but what really are LLMs and knowledge graphs? LLMs are large language models. They are a kind of generative AI, which basically means that it's AI that generates some text in this case, since it's a language model, and they can be used in many different applications. Some examples are ChatGPT and Bard. You've probably seen some examples of them. Like you can ask a question or ask for advice or anything with text, really. And LLMs are really good at processing text, right? You can give it a full document, and it will just take a few seconds for it to process it. And you can ask it to summarize it, or you can ask it for key points, whatever you want. So it's really good at processing text, and that's something we want to exploit in this project. And they also seem to have some kind of common sense, right? You, you can say, uh, mention Alice, and it will understand that Alice is a name and just not a word it's never seen before. And that can be really good. Uh, for example, if a person has written a book, we know that that's an author, but it might not be obvious for all uh, computer programs that a person has written a book is an author. But LLMs can figure that out. But there are also some cons with LLMs. For example, they have a maximum input size called the context window, which basically means it can only consider a set amount of text uh, at once. Otherwise, you have to do some fancy, fancy splitting up the text into different prompts, for example. And there's also a lack of transparency, right? LLMs. Uh, we can give LLMs an input, and we can say we got this output from this input, but we can't really say why we got it. We just know that it produced that output. And, and then, yeah, just quickly, what is a knowledge graph? It's a graph that consists of nodes and relationships. Nodes are used to represent entities, concepts, and more. And relationships describe the context and how it's connected to other nodes. And here to the right, we have an example of a knowledge graph. Uh, so it's just basically a graph way of representing information. So how did we tackle the problem? We created a pipeline consisting of three steps, where the first step is chunking. The second step is extraction of nodes and relationships. And the third step is entity disambiguation. And I will walk through these steps one by one, why we apply them and how we apply them. And then I will show you the results. So first. Chunking. Chunking is the process of converting a document into several chunks. And in our case, since we have a text input, we want to split the text into pieces. 
And that might sound very simple, like we can just split the text after 200 characters. Uh, and we do this to fit the input space. So as I said before, LLMs have a maximum input size, so we can only give it like part of the document if, our, if, if, if we not have a really short document. So we want to split our long text into pieces, and you could do this by just splitting it after a few characters, so or a set amount of characters. But in this example, I will split after a few. So consider this text. Alice is 25 years old, and Bob is her friend. Alice and Bob often play football. So if you just split after a set amount of characters, we could end up with something looking like this, where Alice is 25 years old, Bob is her friend, and then we have the second sentence, Alice and Bob. That ends, and the second chunk would be often play football, but that doesn't really make any sense. It doesn't mean anything, right? Who often play football? So what we did to solve this was basically keep some of the text from the previous chunk in the next chunk. So we would instead get something like this, where we the first chunk stays the same, but all the next chunk keep some from the previous chunk, and the second chunk would keep Alice and Bob often play football. So in that case, it would make sense instead. And then we go to the really interesting part, extracting nodes and edges. And we do this by just prompting an LLM. And it's really cool that you can just give an LLM an instruction and it will perform it, right? So here's just an example I tried earlier where we gave, uh, I gave a little bit of text here. Alice is 25 years old and Bob is her friend and said, please create a knowledge graph on this. And you can see at the bottom, it created some kind of graph representation of, of the knowledge graph we've seen here before as I used a few examples. Uh, so it works and it's really, really cool. So what we did then was basically apply this pro uh, process to all the nodes we chunked up or all the text pieces uh, we chunked up. So Alice is 25 years old and Bob is her friend would, for example, become uh, this as we've seen before. And then if I have another chunk that is Bob lives in the city Stockholm, which is 188 square kilometers, we would uh, get another Bob uh, node here, which lives in the city Stockholm, which is a new node. And then if we just have some more uh, text here that says Stockholm is a city with a population of a million people, we get another Stockholm chunk. And now we have a problem. We have two Bobs and two Stockholms, but they refer to the same entity, right? So we really want the nodes to be the same. So that leads us to the third step, entity disambiguation which basically means we want to merge node, the nodes together to a single node if they refer to the same thing. And as I said, we have a set of nodes and relationships, some are duplicates, information can be spread out between different nodes. In this case, we want to merge them. And what we did to solve this was group up the nodes on the type. So for example, all the people node would be, uh, would be in one group and all the city nodes would be in another group. So and in this example, we have two Bob nodes, and we just ask an LLM, please uh, remove all duplicates. It does that. It uh, only gives us Alice and a Bob node. And for the set example with Stockholm, it would combine the nodes into one uh, bigger node. And then we can just connect the knowledge graph back together. Uh, so now we have a singular Bob node, so we just take all the relations connected to any Bob node and connect them to this one. And we have a finished knowledge graph. Real, I think this is really good. So, and it works. But this is, of course, a very, very small one. But uh, I'm going to show you now a demo where I run this pipeline on the James Bond Wikipedia page. Uh, and I, I'm going to show you the resulting, resulting graph, which looks something like this. So, we have a large graph here. It's very connected. We have many different nodes. Uh, as you can see, it's right different types of nodes. So if we zoom in somewhere, we can, for example, zoom in here, we can see that I am Fleming is here. Uh, he is marked as an author, and I know he wrote a lot of the books the James Bond movies are uh, created from. And we can see here that he has a relationship to some purple nodes here, which are books. And he, he published those books. I, I guess he wrote them, maybe published them as well. Not sure. So that's something it kind of confused a little bit, maybe. Uh, and then if we move down here, we have James Bond, which is, of course, very important to have here. Uh, and he's marked as a character. 
And that seems to work. It has some connections to other characters, which he met in his different uh, movies. But it uh, made a mistake here, actually. So we can see that James Bond was banned in the Soviet Union, which kind of doesn't make sense for a character to ba be banned. It's probably like more the franchise that's banned. So it made a little bit of a mistake combining the character James Bond and the franchise James Bond into one node. But yeah, like we, we got the knowledge graph and it works. We have the information and then we can start looking at how the different characters are related, how they met, stuff like that. So I think that's really, really cool. And you can apply this to basically any document. Uh, so let's move back here to the slides. And I just want to mention some challenges and limitations. Uh, and first one, accuracy issues. It didn't work perfectly, but we only spent a couple of weeks on this. So I think like that we got the graph overall is very cool. So it would be cool to see if someone else starts working a bit on this and can create a better graph. That would be amazing. Then we have data bias. We have to think about uh, who wrote the source document, which can read lead to a biased knowledge graph in the end. And then we have some leaps of faith here between different steps in our pipeline. We trust LLM a lot, the output for the LLM, LLM example, for example. And then model limitations. For example, the input length of the LLM leads us to need to do chunking, which might introduce errors into the process. Uh, and that's all I wanted to talk about today. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Uh, I've seen there's a few questions in chat, so I will start by answering them. But before that, uh, all this code for this pipeline is open source and available on Neo4j's GitHub. So if you want to take a look at it or work on it more yourself, feel free to search for NALLM on Neo4j's GitHub or just follow this link. And if you have any questions, please uh, send me an email. Uh, I'm happy to answer or help with anything. I hope this was inspiring and uh, somewhat uh, helpful. Uh, so I, I'll, I'll start with some questions. I have a couple of minutes here before the next uh, talk. Uh, I see someone here asked, why not split chunks at a full stop? Uh, you could do that, absolutely. But sometimes there's a previous sentence that's uh, also uh, relevant. So you we took like maybe 300 characters from the uh, previous chunk and keep it in the next chunk. So if you have several sentences, you can keep them. Uh, or it's a chance that you keep all of them. But you can, for example, maybe keep the two previous sentences or something like that if you want. Uh, I know chunking is a very hard topic, and many people have looked into it. So there's probably a lot of research you can read into if, you, uh, if you're very interested. Uh, someone asked how how did how does the disambiguation for entities that are named as Bob with a big or capital letter in the beginning, Bob or uh, without a capital letter, or Bob with several Bs? That's why we use LLMs for the disambiguation. Uh, so, for example, if we would have a Bob node that's uh, with like only his first name, and then maybe we have a Bob node with the first and last name. The LLM understands that these are the same uh, same entity, and will actually combine them together or remove the duplicates. Uh, and let's see, there's a lot of questions, and I have a hard time keeping track of everything. Uh, how do you ensure that your LLMs always provide the data in the correct format? For example, JSON. You can actually provide the instructions for the LLM on how you want it to output the data. It doesn't always listen, but there's some different frameworks. Uh, we know it's one called guardrails, for example, which helps you actually keep the correct uh, format on the, on the resulting data. Uh, and we're ending in five seconds. So I'm sorry I couldn't answer all, all the questions, but please send me an email if you have, uh, have more questions. Uh, thank you very much again for listening and uh, have a good note.